And I have nothing to do with Project 2025. Uh, that's out there. I haven't read it. I don't want to read it purposely. I'm not going to read it. This was a group of people that got together. They came up with some ideas, I guess some good, some bad. But it makes no difference. I have nothing to do. Everybody knows I'm an open book. And we know what a second Trump term would look like. It's all laid out in Project 2025. Project 2025 is the Trump agenda. Make no mistake about it. Here's the thing. It's an agenda nobody asked for. The American people want no part of Trump's Project 2025. Let me tell you what our Project 2025 is. <laughs> Beat the hell out of them. We're back with The Big Deal. I'm Errol Lewis. Tonight, we're going to focus on Project 2025, a policy platform that has become one of the Democrats' favorite rallying cries throughout this election year. It was created by the Heritage Foundation, a conservative think tank, as a blueprint for the next Republican administration. But Donald Trump is trying to distance himself from this 900-page plan. Here's what he had to say about it during the recent debate. I have nothing to do with Project 2025. Uh, that's out there. I haven't read it. I don't want to read it purposely. I'm not going to read it. This was a group of people that got together. They came up with some ideas. I guess some good, some bad. But it makes no difference. I have nothing to do. Everybody knows I'm an open book. But this was not a random group of activists who designed the agenda. The authors include 140 people who had worked under the Trump administration, including six of his cabinet secretaries. So what's actually in Project 2025, which has stirred up so much controversy? Joining me now to go through some of the policy proposals in depth is Josh Robbins, Spectrum News Chief National Political Reporter. Great to see you, Josh. Same, Earl. So now, Project 2025 is backed by more than 100 conservative organizations, and one of their main agenda points is to dismantle the so-called administrative state, also called the deep state. And to do so, Project 2025 recommends that the next administration reissue one of Trump's executive orders from 2020 that reclassified 50,000 civil servants as political appointees. Walk us through what a political appointee is compared to a federal employee, and what kind of power would this give the next president? So a federal employee generally, in many situations, has protections under civil service, meaning that they are protected from um, being fired for without cause, and their fealty as many people see it, as they're supposed to see it, is to the Constitution and not to any particular president. Under Project 2025, the thought is to uh, enhance, to really grow the number of political appointees who the critics of this proposal would say uh, has people pledging fealty less to the law as written and more to the president in the White House, in this situation being President Trump. Okay. Oh, uh, let's look at the recommended tax policy. Project 2025 proposes simplifying the tax code by putting all households into two tax brackets, 15% and 30%, and, quote, eliminating most deductions, credits, and exclusions. Walk us through what that would be for taxpayers. This is something that's not particularly unusual for conservatives. There's been talk about a flat tax before or really simplifying the tax codes. This analysis, by the way, is done by the Center for American Progress. It's a liberal organization, but they certainly spent time looking at the tax rates. And according to their analysis, the burden of these changes to the marginal tax rate would fall mostly on those on the lower end of the spectrum. Those on the higher end would get a tax cut. Again, um, it's not particularly new. It's certainly controversial. It's also difficult because unless there's a vast majority of, uh, that, of the president's allies in Congress, he would be unable to get this through Congress. And how does this differ from what Trump himself is proposing as a tax strategy? Trump as a tax strategy has talked um, less about these particular changes of tax rates and more about, let's say, uh, ending taxes on tips, changing the SALT deduction, which is for high states. He isn't talking in this granular changes about, um, you know, sticking it to people who make on the uh, to make less money and giving a tax cut for, for uh, those making more money, certainly not. But if you drill down into the details, as the Center for American Progress has done, that indeed would be the situation. You can see here that those making 200000 according to their analysis, would be paying less in taxes. Those who make less money would be paying more. Okay, let's turn to education. A lot of the Project 2025 ideas 
would require a lot of cooperation from Congress, and that's especially true when it comes to one of the main agenda items, which is to eliminate the Federal Department of Education altogether. Now, Donald Trump is on the record as agreeing with that idea, saying that he wants to bring education back to the states. What would be the actual implications of that? I should say that this isn't an entirely new agenda. Ronald Reagan has called, had called in 1979 for uh, getting rid of the Federal Department of Education. It's, it's something that is used. It also is something that really wouldn't have a huge practical impact on people's lives. Uh, obviously, it would have an impact, but most money for education comes locally. So I just want to put that out there. Where there would be changes, and, and I, I certainly think that people would notice it unless the money comes elsewhere, is the um, Project 2025 call to get rid of federal Title I funds. These are for low-income students. You can see um, some shades, the darker the shade, the more money that goes there. Uh, there would be practical impact there. But uh, again, just to say that the Department of Education gives about 10 percent, uh, less than 10 percent of uh, federal funding comes from the Department of Education to local schools. Mostly it's local money. Okay, so now let's talk about the politics of this a little bit. The Heritage Foundation has been around for 50 years, and they claim that President Ronald Reagan actually adopted 60% of their recommendations during his first term. That was back in the 80s. And Donald Trump may be trying to distance himself from this think tank now, but during his first year in office, his administration actually enacted two-thirds of the Heritage Foundation's policy recommendations. We can't review all of that right now, but I mean, how does his campaign plan in the Republican platform and Project 2025 overlap, and how do they differ? There's certainly overlap. When he said in that debate that he has, knows nothing about it, that doesn't pass the smell test. You can see there, Kevin Roberts, maybe you could look closely at your screen. He uh, and Trump actually, according to numerous reports, took a plane ride together when Trump was delivering the keynote address to the Heritage Foundation back in 2022. And as you mentioned earlier, uh, there's lots of overlap between his administration and his advisors and the Heritage Administration. Let's talk about the polling here. It indicates that the word is spreading about Project 2025. Three quarters of likely voters who were polled recently say that they've heard about Project 2025, and out of that group, more than 60% say that they oppose it. So is this Democratic strategy of trying to tie Trump to Project 2025 working? Or is his disavowal maybe uh, taking hold with anybody? Democrats have been extremely effective of pinning this on Trump. It's kind of, for people who are just regular voters, a bit of a, a obscure uh, policy, but they have made it into really the boogeyman of this campaign. I, I should note that, look, there's, there's certainly a lot of overlap between the Trump campaign and the Heritage Foundation uh, and the Trump administration. But for, on a practical level, this would be difficult to implement for if Donald Trump is elected, unless he has a real big majority in Congress. There's some things he can do unilaterally. He can champion it. But the Democrats have perhaps overstated what the actual effect is, absent a blowout for Trump and for fellow like-minded Republicans. All right, Josh, thank you for clarifying so much of that. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. Let Spectrum News be your resource for balanced, in-depth political coverage. And click the subscribe button right here. You can also download our app or watch us on TV to learn more about the candidates, where they stand on the issues, and more. We'll see you then.